Lift up your heads, all you gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory.
Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Williams, and as always, I greet you with Jesus' joy. And it is with that joy we love to bring to you this weekend worship experience. We hope and pray this experience blesses you in ways that you do not dream. God bless you. I will see you on the other side of this experience. Y'all ready for the word? Amen. I got a little word, a little bit to say. Y'all join hands with those around you now. As you do that, I want to join all those who are uh, joining us by live streaming. There are people all over the state, in fact, all over the world, actually, from uh, places you won't imagine that are joining us in worship. And we're grateful to God that we have the technology to connect globally with people as we give God glory, honor, and praise and feed people God's word. Let's pray. God, we are grateful that trouble don't last always. Amen. Thank you, God. We're here to testify that trouble don't last always. You get us through the trouble or you can deliver us in the trouble. But God, we know you're a troubleshooter. And for that, oh God, we give you thanks and we give you praise. God, we're here because we love you. And we are here because you love us. God, we are grateful because there was a time we wouldn't be caught dead in the middle of a week at church. But God, you have changed our hearts and our desires. And Lord, we couldn't wait to get to the house of prayer. Now that we're here, God, we give you honor and praise. And we pray, God, that you would just swell up in this place, flex, flex your muscles, and let the enemy know who's in charge today. God, forgive us of our sins, consecrate and cleanse us now and make us ready to receive the seed of your word. We pray that as the seed is sown, that it will find good ground in the soil of our soul and with time and tending, bring forth the fruit of the character and conduct of Christ because more than anything else, Lord, we want to be like Jesus in our hearts. Now, God, I pray for me, God. You called me. You know all about me. Let no flaws, faults, or failures in me hinder the free-flowing movement of your Holy Spirit. Please, Lord, don't penalize your people for anything in me that is not like you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And if there be any wicked way in me, cast it out and lead me in the way that is eternal. Take my mind, Lord, and think with my mind, my mouth, Lord, and speak with my mouth. It may be my voice, but let it be your words, I pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And God, we will be careful to give your name the praise, honor, and glory for you. And you alone, Lord, are worthy of the highest praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask it for his sake. We do pray. All who agree with that prayer, say amen. amen. Come on, let's give him praise one more again. Amen. Amen. Ushers, go ahead and let people in the vestry, anybody standing by the door, even if you're not an usher, you can stick your head out and say, Pastor, say, come right on in. Amen. If you're not an usher officially, we'll make you an ursher unofficially. <laughs> Amen. Do me a favor in your Bibles or in your app. Would you turn to Joshua chapter, I think it's 14, verses 10 through 13. Joshua 14, chapter 14, verses 10 through 13. Amen. 14, 10 through 13. See what the Spirit has to say to the church today. Joshua, in the Old Testament record, right before Judges, right after Deuteronomy, I, I think. Is that right? <laughs> See if y'all are paying attention. <laughs> if you found it, say amen. amen. Chapter 14, verses 10 through 13 in the New International Version of the Hebrew text, it reads like this. Now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses while in Israel, moved about in the wilderness. So here I am today, 85 years old. I am still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. 
Now give me this hill country, or one translation said, give me my mountain that the Lord promised me that day. You yourselves heard that the Anakites were there and their cities were large and fortified, but the Lord helping me, I will drive them out just as he said. Then Joshua blessed Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and gave him Hebron as his inheritance. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. With the help of the Holy Spirit in your prayers, I want to talk to you from this thing, bragging on God. Bragging on God. Amen. Let them, I see some people uh, in the vestibule. Uh, somebody volunteer. Oh, we got an usher right there. Go ahead and let them in. And they're looking like they can't come in, and I don't want them to miss. Y'all give me a minute so we can let them come in, because I want them to miss bragging on God. Amen. Bragging on God. Amen. Come right on in. They still coming. Come on in. Bragging on God. When I was a young boy, I liked to watch TV, and I used to watch westerns. One of my favorite westerns is one you may not even remember. It's kind of an obscure western, but it came on all the time, and I always watched it. It was called The Sons of Will Sonnet. I don't know if anybody remembers that one. Y'all remember that one? Oh, Lord. Okay, The Sons of Will Sonnet. I love that show. It was a Western. Old man and his sons. And he was the fastest gun in the West. And uh, you would always have those incidences in the story where he would prove how fast he was. He was an old man and was even faster than his sons. And he, almost inevitably at the point in the story where he would show how fast he was or the issue came up, he would always assure people indeed that he was fast. And after he said it or showed it, he would always say these words, uh, no brag, just fact. <laughs> Sounds like a cocky old man, doesn't it? What he was saying in substance is, when I say that I'm the fastest gun in the West, I'm not just um, giving you uh, braggadocious air. This is not something I'm just saying. He's saying the very fact that I'm alive and those who challenge me are dead is proof positive that I'm not bragging, it's a fact. And so hence his favorite phrase, I'm the fastest in the West, no brag, just fact. Well, in our text today, when you read the text, you will read a lot of bragging going on. And if you read it too superficially, it will sound like Caleb in the text is bragging on himself. He's talking about how long he had survived and how strong he is now, even at 85 years old, and how he is certain that the inheritance that God gave him, that he is able to claim his inheritance in spite of opposition in the land. If you read it superficially, it sounds like Caleb is bragging on what he is and what he's capable still of doing. But when you read it with closer scrutiny, you realize that it's really not Caleb bragging on himself. It is really Caleb bragging on God. Caleb is not taking the credit for how he is and what he can still do. But instead, his faith brags on the fact that he is where he is because of God, and he can do what he does because of God. Now, uh, in a moment, I want to get into the content of the text. But before I get to the content of the text, it's important to give the context, give the text some context, and then I'll give you the content of the text. Y'all ready? I can't say that again. Y'all ready? You know the story because here in the text, Joshua, who is the chieftain of Israel, is parceling out the land in sections of the land to each of the tribes. Caleb is a chieftain in the largest tribe, which is the tribe of Judah, and he is there to claim his inheritance just like all the rest. And so there's a slice or a sliver or a scripture, a section of the land that belongs to him, and he's there to lay claim to his land. What's exciting about his claim is the fact that he has had to wait so long before he could even claim his inheritance. And all the things that are inherent 
in what he says. You see, you have to go back a bit to very familiar biblical territory to really give the text the impact and implications that are housed therein. You know that he is a part of the people of God who come out of slavery. Moses led them out of slavery, as you know, and they've seen a lot since they've been out of slavery. They've seen a Red Sea split. They've seen manna fall from heaven. They've seen water come from dry rocks. They've, meet, they've defeated the Amalekites in the wilderness. They stood at the foot of a burning, shaking mountain, Sinai, where Moses goes up and receives the Ten Commandments. And while he's there, you remember they make a golden calf. And when they come back down, they destroy the calf. They made all those uh, changes, and they receive the law that helps make them a nation. Then they finally get to the promised land. And you remember that Caleb is one of the 12 that they send into the promised land. When they go into the promised land to do a reconnaissance, they're going in to pay attention to the land because uh, they have to make sure that they know what the land is like. 12 go in because it has to be divided among the 12. So they start and go south on the ridge of mountains that make up the spine of the country that they're in. They go all the way down through Hebron, and then they make their way back. And when they go into the land, the land is just like God said it would. It was a land flowing with milk and honey. In fact, the Bible says that when they return, uh, they return carrying specimens, a specimen of grapes, and the grapes are so big, uh, brimming with luscious vitality, that it takes two men to carry them on a stake. While they're there in the promised land getting samples and making a reconnaissance, uh, they are hopeful until they come into a section of the place called Hebron. And when they get to Hebron, they are intimidated, at least 10 of them are, because there is a walled up city in Hebron and there are giants in Hebron. The Bible calls them the sons of Anak or the Anakim. I am means plural. So the people, it was a uh, people who were so big that their own assessment of themselves, that is the Israelites compared to the giants, was that we are grasshoppers in their sight. They weren't told they were grasshoppers. They volunteered to see themselves as grasshoppers compared to the giants that were there. So when they got back, they brought back specimens that uh, verified that what God said about the land was true. But they said, but there's something that apparently God must have overlooked. This place is full of giants and we are not able. You know the story. The Bible says that 10 of them said we're not able. Two of them said they were. And they cried all night long, wept and wailed all night long because, you know, fear is contagious. And those 10 infected the entire country. And as a consequence of infecting all of the people of God, the Bible says that they wept and wailed all night long. And when morning came on a rope of twilight, the Bible says that their fear and their frustration and their, and their anger turned to bitterness. And they decided that they want to get a new leader and go back to Egypt. And of course, Caleb and Joshua step in and tell them not to do such a crazy thing and try to encourage them and say, look, we are well able to go up. Let's go up and take the land. But the Bible says that God became frustrated and disappointed in his people and said to them, you will not enter the land. An entire generation will die in the dust of the desert because of your lack of faithfulness. But then God inserts this particular caveat that is uh, uh, significant when it comes to Caleb and Joshua. He says, but because Caleb had a different spirit and because he followed me wholeheartedly, he will have his inheritance. And so that was 40 years prior to what we find in the text. And so the Bible says 40 years later, after an entire generation has died in the wilderness, they are once again at the city limits of the promised land. And the Bible says they have gone through the promised land and put their enemies to flight. God has given them victory after victory. And now it is time for them not simply to claim the land and put their enemies to flight, but now they are parceling up the land for each of the tribes, and that's where we are now. 40 years later, we're there. And while we're there, everyone comes to stake their claim. And among those is a holdover from the previous generation. 
This generation is coming to get what was promised to their ancestors, but because of their lack of faith, they missed out on it. But there are two people, one in our text, Caleb, who is a holdover from the previous generation. He is not someone who simply heard about what happened. He was there to testify about what happened. And now, in the midst of everything he's come through, He's standing in line, and when it's his turn to come, Joshua's sitting there, parsing out the land, and he steps up. He's an old man now. He's 85 years old, but he steps up. And what he says in substance to Joshua is, Joshua, I want what God promised me. Give me what God promised. I know all these young people around here are going to get theirs. He said, but I want what God promised me too. And then this is when he starts bragging. He starts bragging, and he starts bragging on God. He's real confident, almost cocky if you don't know the context. He starts bragging about what he can do and how he can take the land and why. It's all based, y'all, on the promise that God gave him. He is clear. He has faith. He is certain. But it is all based on the fact that God had made him a promise. So I want what God promised me. Now watch how he says, I want what God promised me. He says, I want what God promised me. God promised me this land. And I'm, my presence here is a witness that God keeps his promise. Watch this. He says, I want my land. I want the promise of land. He says, because here I am. He says, uh, God has kept me. Somebody say, kept me. Yeah. I like that. He says, God has kept me. He says, God has kept me for 40 years. God made me a promise 40 years ago, and God has kept me for 40 years. Now here's what shouts me, because he has a 40 year testimony that God has kept him. Now watch this, he said, I'm confident that the land is supposed to be for me because God has kept me through everything that I've gone through for 40 years. He said, y'all remember how, he said, Joshua, they don't know, but Joshua, you remember how old I was when I started? He said, I was reasonably, a reasonably young man, and I had a vision. God gave me a vision for what belonged to me, what was mine. It was a, a God-inspired vision for my life. He says, um, but I've had to wait for the fulfillment of this promise for 40 years. And I don't know who I'm talking to today. I feel like I'm talking to somebody. Somebody, God has made you a promise, and you have had to wait for it for 40 years. Well, Caleb's testimony is here to tell you that if God promised it, it doesn't matter how long it takes, you keep on walking until you get to the place where you can fulfill that promise. It might be right in front of you. You've had to wait a long time. Uh, but keep on waiting. He said, God has kept me. And the thing that's shoutable material about his testimony is he's telling you that God is a keeper. Somebody say God is a keeper. See, we talk about the fact that God is a deliverer and God is a redeemer. And he is a deliverer and he is a redeemer. But God is also a God who can, he can keep you. Look at your neighbor and tell him I'm kept. Yeah, you, if you're a kept man, kept woman, ain't nothing wrong with being kept. It's who keeps you that matters. And God is the one who's a keeper. Look at your neighbor and tell him, yes, he is. Yeah, he's kept me. He said he kept me, kept me. He kept me, kept me. He kept me for a long time. He said, that I'm a, he said watch this. He kept me for a long time. Watch. And he kept me through what killed my generation? Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. He said, look, I went through the same thing that my generation went through. And I should have died with him. I went through the same thing, the same desert, the same circumstances, the same environment, got the same history. He said, but I survived what killed them. 
that lets me know that God wants me to have my land because he kept me through what killed. Is there anybody in here? Is that your testimony? Has God kept you through what should have killed you? Now, I know there's some deep people in here, so let me hurry up and say, look, I don't know why God kept you and didn't keep everybody else. I'm not even going to pretend like I know why they didn't make it. I do know that since you have, you made it by the grace of God. And if you're still here, God must have a reason for you to be here. God must, he must not be finished with you yet. I can't explain why other people didn't make it. But if you made it, then you got a testimony. God, I wish I had time to talk about this because I've been through some stuff, y'all. <laughs> If I pass the mic around, I bet you there's some people been in here who tell you they can be real specific, can't they? Come on, there's some drugs that should have took you out, that killed your partners. There, come on, there's some behaviors that should have killed you. Come on, talk to me. There's some groups you were with and everybody in your group ain't here, but you survived. Come on, talk to me. Some sicknesses that took other people out and you're still here. Don't look at me like that. Somebody say he's a keeper. Yeah, he kept me. Joshua said, he kept me. He kept me. Watch. And he kept me for 40 years. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. He said he kept me, and he kept me for a long, <laughs> kept me for a long time. Oh, my God. I, and, and, you know, God goes to great lengths to make sure he keeps his promises to you. He said, I had to wait a long time. He said, but I'm not even going to sweat or fret or complain about having to wait a long time because no matter how long I waited, God kept me through the whole thing. And listen, y'all, that, that's worth shouting about. Instead of getting mad that it's taking God so long, you ought to be glad that he kept you no matter how long it took. <laughs> oh, it gets better. I got to hurry up. I run out of time. He, it gets better. In verse 10, he said, God kept me. and kept me a long time. I think it's in verse 11, I think. In verse 11, he not only says God kept me, he not only kept me long, but he kept me strong. <laughs> it, it's in the text. Uh, he said he kept me for 45 years. Put verse 11 up. He said, it kept me for, he said, now I'm 85 years old. I am still as strong today. <laughs> Y'all don't hear me. As the day Moses sent me out, I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle as I was then. Y'all don't hear me. He said, God kept me for a long time. But God not only kept me long, but he kept me kept me strong. He not only kept my life, but he kept my strength. Y'all don't hear me. He said, look, he said, when God keeps you, God will not only uh, keep your body, but he'll keep your mind. He'll keep your heart. That's what he's saying. I'm not just physically strong, but I wasn't scared back then, and I ain't scared now. You don't hear me. I know there were enemies back then and there are enemies now, but listen, just because I've been at it 40 years and I'm 85, I ain't scared. In fact, the journey I went through was part of the reason why my strength is so strong, my faith is so strong, my confidence is so strong, my courage is so strong. God has shown me so much. Anybody know that God can keep you strong? So my sake and knew my mind, body, and spirit. God can keep you strong. Yeah, he'll, he'll keep you courageous. He says, so I know I got obstacles before me, and I know people think I'm, uh, I'm too old uh, uh, to really be asking for what I'm asking for and expecting what I'm expecting. Somebody look at your neighbor and tell you, you're never too old. <laughs> I, I don't care who you are, you... God put a dream in your spirit to have a business. If it's still there and you're still here, it ain't too late. If you 
talking about you wanted to go to school and you never got a chance to school, you put your husband through school, put your wife through school, put the kids through school, and now people tell you, well, it's too late and you're too old. Well, if you're still alive and they still got schools and you got access to money or a God who can find the money, it ain't too late. <laughs> Whatever that dream is that God has given you, if you still got that dream, it's not too late. Am I right about it? Just, just, just be strong and be of good courage. He said, I'm, he said, it kept me long and he kept me strong. He said, so I, I believe I can take it. He says, so give me my mouth. I'm, he says, I, I've been kept by God. And so it's all about God. I, I, I'm, I'm here still and still uh, safe and capable uh, because of God. I'm not scared, and it's all because of God. He said, now, uh, so give me my mouth. Uh, I, I'm ready for it. I deserve it. Uh, I know I can handle it because God would not have brought me. Uh, it's where he brought me uh, to deny me what he promised me. So Joshua, I know I'm in line with all these young people, but give me what God promised me. Uh, he, it, look, he said, put verse 12 up. It, it's, it's the mountain God promised me. It's, it's, he said, now give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. I mean, you, you heard, you heard that there's, there's giants in the city, it's large and far but God helping me, I'm going to drive them out just like he said. <laughs> and let me break that down so you can go back to work. He, he's saying, look, uh, God promised me and the evidence that God keeps his promise is he's kept me through everything that I've been through. And I still am capable of, of claiming my inheritance. He says, so that mountain is mine. So give me the hill country. Give me my mountain. Hey, now, it's a mountain, y'all. It's a mountain. It's not a plain. It's a mountain. Uh, he, he said, give me this mountain. Now, when he said give it to me, he, he just means that he's going to tell him this is your mountain. Right? Uh, but he's not saying that he's going to clear the land and deal with the enemies for him. He said, no, this is your mountain. This, this belongs to you. By right, this is yours. <laughs> uh, but if you want what belongs to you, you got to take, go get, go claim what belongs to you. Now watch this. He said, I know it's a mountain and I know I'm 85. But look, God has given me this mountain. So since he's already given it to me, I'm going to take it like it's already mine. He said, now, he said, I know you, y'all are looking at me and I'm 85 and you remember that we reported that there are mount, that there are giants in the land. So I got some issues I got to deal with. <laughs> it's mine. He said, but it's a, it's a mountain and there's some giants in there. He said, but God says it's mine. <laughs> Somebody going to get this in a minute. He said, I got some obstacles and some challenges. Uh, and it's not going to be easy. But God says that it's mine. And since God says it's mine, he says, I know the cities are fortified. I know the giants are threatening. He says, but I'm going to take the land. How are you going to get it? He said, the Lord helping me. <laughs> there it is. It, it's simple today, y'all. We're going to be finished in a minute. He, he says, it, it looks like the odds are stacked against me. Uh, but you need to understand that me and Judah, my tribe, are not going up there by ourselves. Uh, whatever we got to deal with, we'll be able to deal with it. God helping us. God will help us drive them out. Watch this. Just as he said. Ooh, you missed your shout cue. Well, here's what shouts me. Not simply that God said it, but when God said it. He said it. 
<laughs> 40 years, I'm trying to help you. You know God's promise doesn't have an expiration date. God says, you can have it. God says, and when you get it, there's going to be giants. He said, but don't worry about it. I will drive them out before you. He said, now I've been waiting for this fight for 40 years. And 40 years later, they still got cousins up in the mountains. But I was ready then, and I'm ready now. Because God is with me, and God told me that I will drive them out. Oh, you don't hear me. And if God said it, we hope and pray that you've been blessed by today's message, and we're excited to extend an invitation for you to become a Christian, a devoted follower of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. If you want to be saved and have new life in Jesus Christ, pray this prayer, Lord, Lord, I confess that I'm a sinner and I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me of all of my sins, Lord. I turn away from my old life and turn now to you. I believe that because your son, Jesus, died on the cross for my sins, I am indeed forgiven. Now, God, I surrender my life to you and by faith, I receive Jesus Christ and accept him as Savior, Lord, and leader of my life. Thank you for forgiving my sins. Thank you for the gift of the Spirit, and thank you for giving me brand new life in Jesus Christ. Lord, I am forever yours. Amen. Now that you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it is important that you become a part of a Christian fellowship. If you want to become a part of Base Memorials Church, you can call the number on the screen now, and someone will be there to share with you how you can become a part of our fellowship. If you're already a follower of Jesus, but wish to become a member of Base Memorial, you too can call the number on the screen and those on the line will give you information about how you can become a member of Base Memorial. If you desire prayer, go to our website, basememorial.com, click prayer, or you can call the number on our screen. We'll be waiting for you. We trust now that the Word of God did indeed bless your spirit. Uh, we'd like for you to do us a favor. If this uh, broadcast is being a blessing to you, then we pray, and God, pray that you will share the Word with other people so that they will know about our worship experience as well. And listen, we're able to bring this worship experience to you because of the faithful giving of all of our members and the friends of Base Memorial as well. And uh, there are several ways that you can give. One way you can give is you can give by Cash App. That is dollar sign Bates Memorial, and that goes right to our account. Or you can text to give. The information is on your screen. Follow those details, and it will work, uh, and your money will get right where it's supposed to go. Also, you can go online, BatesMemorial.com. Click on the Giving tab and follow the brief instructions, and you shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. Also, if you want to just stop by, some people are in there at their leisure while they're out and about, they'll stop by and drop off their gifts to support the ministry. You can do that as well, and it will make sure it gets where it's supposed to go. Finally, if none of those ways work, if you want to just mail it in, you can do that too. Uh, just mail it to Base Memorial 620, that's 620. East Lampton Street, Louisville, Kentucky, 40203, and uh, we'll make sure that it gets where it's supposed to go. What's up, Bates Memorial family and friends? Listen, this is the year that we're serving with a made-up mind, and we've got a lot that you can get involved in. Check this out. Hey, Bates Memorial. We are starting our debt-free program known as D-Free. Join us via Zoom on February the 28th as we say yes to no debt. You can get more information by calling the church. Hello, Bates family and friends. This is Minister Tony Phelps, staff accountant here at Bates Memorial. The main reason I'm here is to remind you that this will soon be time for us to distribute 2020 giving statements. Given the current pandemic and the need for us to continue to socially distance, we want to make sure that we have all the information we need to get your giving statements to you. Email is the most efficient way to deliver them to you. But if you prefer delivery by U.S. mail, we can do that, too. That means we need to make sure that we have your most current contact information in our system. 
So we are asking that you go to our website at www.batesmemorial.com. Click on the membership tab, enter your email and password, and it will take you directly to your personal page. Or you can create your personal account if you have been signing in as a guest to give or you've been using Cash App. Then you go to the home and select profile and the drop down menu. And from there, you can update your address and telephone number, and you can enter your preferred email address where we will send your 2020 giving statements. Now, if you need a little assistance, don't hesitate to call at 502-636-0523, extension 206, and we will be more than happy to walk you through the process. There is a saying, no man or woman is an island which simply means all of us will need someone to lend us a helping hand at some point and time in our life's journey. So now that you have heard the why, it is our prayers you will reach out to us whenever the need is there for you or your loved ones. This ministry will have its inception on March 4th, 2021, and we will be meeting virtually 6.30 to 7.30 p.m., and every Thursday thereafter until we come back to in person. At that time, we will provide updated information on where we will be meeting. You can reach us by calling or emailing the church at 502-636-0523 or bmbc at basememorial.com or you can email me directly at wholder at basememorial.com. In the meantime and in between time, take good care of your mental health, stay safe, and keep your eyes and minds focused on Jesus, trusting God to always take good care of you. That's what's going on here at Bates Memorial, and we want you to get involved. Again, we're excited about being able to bring you the word of God, and we hope and pray that it blesses you like we're being blessed just to bring you this word. We like to end with a word of prayer and the benediction, so if you would join us in a word of prayer. God, thank you so much for the privilege of being able to share your word with others. We know that no one can hear your word and take it to heart and never be changed and transformed. So we pray, God, that your word will be a blessing in the hearts and lives of those who hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Receive this benediction. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee, the Lord. Lift up the light of his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And give thee peace. And give thee peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you next weekend.